I am making a video diary of Trillian's surgery. She tore her left rear ACL ligament about three weeks ago. And after doing some research, um, I thought we could handle it conservatively and skip surgery, but you know, after talking to um, the alternative care veterinarian, um, we decided that this just isn't going to get better unless she gets surgery, and so that is that was kind of the deciding factor to talk to a vet who was kind of open to alternative care, and she is. Um, adamant that, that uh, this needs to be surgically corrected. Because we uh, tether her um, out in the front yard mm -hmm. and because we don't have a fence yard, as a herding dog, <clears throat> she sees somebody walking a dog, she just like beelines for him and then... And I wonder if she is more prone than because, and then if she's doing the, you know, running to the end of the tether, running back, yes, running back, exactly. she's putting a lot of stress yes. and twisting forces on yeah, her hind and legs. And both times this happened, it was on a, a Sunday afternoon, nothing going on, put her out in the yard to pee, she couldn't walk when she came in. This is joint space right here in her stifle, okay. and it should be black, and you see this white section right this is white yes. or gray I call yes. it gray uh -huh. so that's a lot more gray shouldn't. so that's where the torn ligament and the ends are and there's probably some you know scar tissue and inflammation right in there that's where it's torn right. so when he goes depends what procedure he does and he determines that on the size of the dog and the weight you know to right. fix it but he'll clean all of that out of the mm -hmm. joint mm -hmm. um, and then do his repair so what they'll be doing tomorrow when I take her in is uh, a board certified orthopedic veterinarian uh, will go in, uh, create um, stabilization where that ligament is now ruptured so that the leg bones can um, have a chance to not move. Uh, so then when she walks, as she slowly heals from the surgery, um, she won't constantly be uh, wearing and tearing on that, on that knee joint. and. Um, you know, it'll have a chance to build scar tissue and, that, and that's how that works. So um, that we are scheduled for that surgery tomorrow morning. At, I'll take her in at 7.30 a.m. to my normal vet clinic and um, we'll take her in for uh, cold laser therapy, um, spinal adjustments and possibly acupuncture and maybe some massage to uh, Dr. Jen. So all these things to kind of help her um, heal without limping and without, you know, distorting her, her spinal alignment uh, permanently because it's going to take about three months for this, you know, to be, I guess, as, as healed up as it's going to be. And both vets have uh, told me that she has a very good chance of being 100% 100% on that back leg and not uh, having a permanent uh, limping or anything like that. So that's what we're hoping for, right? This is the most common canine orthopedic injury. And I just figure like someone else is probably gonna have to make these decisions. These are not decisions that you make lightly because it's a very expensive surgery if you go for the board certified surgeon um, ours is going to run about $2,500 just for the surgery. That doesn't include like the x-rays, the follow-up x-rays, any of the exams. Um, you know, it's going to be expensive. So, you know, I just hope it helps somebody else. <laughs> so if you're going through this, you know, maybe this, maybe this will help you uh, make a decision and, and uh, you know, do right by your, by your pup. Right? That's what it's all about.